It was great. I mean, it was, I got to dig so much deeper and there's so much more that you can find when it's a real person at a real time in a real place as opposed to someone that a writer came up with in their head. You know, both have their advantages because, you know, if it's, if it's not a real person, you can sort of fudge and create whatever sort of backstory you want for your character. But, but this was great because I got to go, okay, what was life like in 1902 when he was born? What was it like in 1927 when he got hired? What was it like in this year? What was going on in the time? And it, like, it gave me so much more stuff to dig through, which was a lot of fun. These are two guys who had a very strong bond, and um, you know they had a very complicated sort of relationship. You know, I you know I think Clyde for J. Edgar was the guy who got through his sort of I am the director and treated him like a human being and didn't let him get away with anything and challenged him in a way that nobody else could, and that in a way sort of wanted J. Edgar to shove away Clyde, but at the same time he had to have him close. And um, you know I think for Clyde there was just apart from having a tremendous amount of respect for the man and seeing what it is that he's capable of, uh, there was a thing in J. Edgar that Clyde knew that was very similar to what he had in himself, and he just wanted to be able to make Edgar comfortable enough to be able to say, I feel these things, I acknowledge it. Clyde, please, like, accept this. And that's all Clyde wanted. And I think, I think he never really got a full culmination of that, but the kiss at the end on, like, the forehead, I think, was, was like... I would have waited another 40 years for that kind of thing, you know? It was great. I, I, it was amazing getting a chance to spend so much time with a guy who's so respected and so good at what he does. Uh, you know, watching him and watching him go through his process on set was like, ooh, that's good, I'm gonna steal that for sure. You know, it's like, he's, he's a pro and he's been doing this a long time. And, you know, I think it really helped for our relationship in the movie, for me to have so much respect for him as an actor and to have so much, you know, respect for what he's done. I think that that really played into sort of the Clyde and Tolson, or the Tolson-Hoover relationship well. Yes and no. Like, um, it was never not fun, but sometimes, like, I would want to have more fun than I probably should have been having, just going, Clint Eastwood, man, this is awesome, you know, and, like, sort of getting lost in it all. But, um, but Leo was great for that because, you know, as soon as Clint would say stop or cut or whatever, boom, Leo would go right back to his script, like, putting his head right back into it, getting back in that, working on the accent, working on the diction, all that stuff. So then I'd, you know, be, like shooting the breeze with like Bruce the grip who worked on Goonies like tell me about that thing oh man that's great and then like look over at Leo and be like oh right yeah yeah okay sorry I have to focus now you know so that was great he is an incredibly underhanded director uh, and it's not for like a lack of effort or anything like that, it's just because he's created a team of people that he trusts illicitly. And uh, you see that and you feel it on set, so it's a very trusting atmosphere where a lot of sets can feel insecure because the director's not sure, or this or that, or oh, the actors aren't sure, or anything like that, like it was none of that. It was just like effortless like ease and excellence. I mean, at first, like, there's definitely, like, a starstruck aspect. I've never been around an icon like that before. And, you know, you're aware of it when you first start dealing with him. But then, you know, very quickly, you're like, oh, he's just the boss. Like, what's up, boss? You know, it's like, it's like you fall into sort of his world, and it's great. 